Okay, uh, so let's get started. What I'm looking at over here are a couple of issues. Um, one of the biggest issues is that the lighting, though you attempted to make it a kind of like a, a, a lower, let me see if I can just figure this out here. Kind of like a lower light source, almost like a firelight or a fireplace or something like that. Um, so what happened is that you kept the top half of the painting bright, even though you were going for a light that came from the bottom. And it wasn't just light from the bottom. It w I don't have Portrait Studio installed because I had to reformat my computer, but I wish I could generate it for you. Abu, can you do that for me real quick? Can you set it up so that, that it's the, the, the point light is... Um, is uh, kind of just coming from a necklace. Just just over there, Abu Portrait Studio is uh, installed. Um, so what would happen really if the light was under her chin would not be here. The light that is happening on her face is in front below, not directly below. It's not in front, it's level with her neck. So that means all of this would be in shadow and only the tip of her nose would be in light. Like that's what would happen over here. Um, if that was the case and her chin would be in shadow she'd have a rim light and that would be about it um, for, for you to copy this one you kind of have to cheat a little bit and that's just for the technicality aspect of it so we can cheat we can make it copy this light source but make the necklace glowing but remember that that's not how it would be so step one would be to just correct the light environment the light around her is visible on her face because she's outside but it's dark so the light environment is dark enough to allow this minor light compared to the sun you know this microscopic light compared to the sun to allow it to illuminate things around it so we're going to start off by darkening the room and i'm just going to do that on a separate layer <clears throat> i'm also going to darken her a little bit kind of like in a gradient And I'm going to start off with her nose. And you see like all these little regions right here that just don't blend. So she's got quite a, a large space for her lower eyelids. So we want to pull that off as well. And the reason why I made it purple is I just chose the light environment color. So not only am I applying the color, I'm applying the value of the, of the environment, which is dark. So you see how instantly it really feels like, if you look at the navigator as well, and we always look to the navigator for uh, an assessment of the read, um, that shows instantly. So I'm going to get that dark value again and kind of just help disappear her face into the shadow. I want to get some of the, get rid of some of the purple. Just like that. I might bring in a, so if we were to cool down a red, so when we get rid of red, when we cool it down, it turns into more of a purplish red. So actually I'm going to do some color correction for any of the red hair that is in shadow. I'm going to bring in a reddish purple and just correct it like that. Because what's happened here is that you have um, kept the red of the hair warm, even though it's a dark environment which has made it look very uncanny, very cheap. By cheap, I just mean like a cheap wig, like not actual human hair that is a bit translucent or has oil in it or has multiple colors. So we've kind of just made things a little bit more. I'm not sure why it's done this. I'm not sure why it's done that, why it's lightened it. Is this a different way that CC behaves with color layer? Color layer isn't supposed to affect the values. What the flip? Um, I, I don't know what color layer does anymore. It's on color. I, I, I don't know what's, what's going on. That is super stupid annoying. Um, so, God, they're always trying to fix something that's not broken. Stupid ass Adobe. Um, so I'm just gonna duplicate the layer and then shift, but just for the red. So I'm going to make the hair a little bit more purple. Then I'm going to just erase. Because the green got a little bit um, shifted as well. 
What the flop? <laughs> Why did it do this? Well, this is so dumb. Color layer is supposed to do the exact opposite of what just happened. Why is it raising the values? Am I not seeing something? If I'm not seeing something, please comment and let me know what just happened. Um, so I see how the hair is a bit more purple. I am going to make the hair more warm, but only around the light source, as you can see. And this is that shadowed area. So I'm just going to work on the cheeks a little bit. The cheeks can't be as high as the nose or as bright because they're, like, unless her nose is so small and her cheeks are huge, then her cheeks would have the same brightness, but just a little bit is, is enough. And I'm going to kind of just help recede the spherical shape of the face back towards the darkness, back towards the space behind. And then the same thing with the neck. There isn't enough light to reveal every part of the neck, just the area that is directly in front. And look at what that did. Very, very nice. I'm going to get the, uh, the darkened layer again and um, get that dark value. Kind of just darken the room around her a little bit. See how they've had blue out here? That might be a nice color for you to introduce. Um, but you had way too much visible, way too much going on. Um, another thing that you have kind of off is the light on the eyes. The light on the eyes should be this exact color and it should be just towards the bottom. So it actually feels like she has water on her face and look what that did. That really made the uh, the texture come out of her eyes and it really made it feel like she was in a room with that tiny little flame. And then we have the top part of the eyeball as part of a shadow because again it's just a sphere at the end of the day. The eyeball is just a sphere and some space. Maybe clip it to the layer below or maybe the brush was set to darken. Even if the brush was set to darken it, it shouldn't have painted darken, would it? C CS5 was never on so my brush is normal let me just see if this works because this is annoying um color it really does mess with it i'm on normal right now It's messing with the values. It shouldn't be doing that. See how it made the lashes lighter? That's that's really, really stupid. That is not what color layer is supposed to do. Oh my gosh. I keep getting being given like one more reason to not use CC. I'm also gonna lower the, oh, the, the, the saturation just a little bit. It is a bit of a dark room. And if you feel like you don't have as much saturation as you want, um, you can, try to bring it back uh, in the lip shape, you can try to bring it in the color, sorry, um, in the eyes, something magical, but in a dark room you typically don't have that. Um, I'm just going to do a couple more things. So this right here would be reflecting some of the light. Um, same as this, kind of like an array. That's how metallics work. Put you on protect tones, and I'm just gonna darken so that we have a texture difference a little bit on the outer belt of that earring. Okay, um, you've used the No Man's Land value white in the painting, which is a big no no. And then finally is the shape of her face. This kind of face shape I would give to a more pater maternal character. I would give this kind of face shape to a character that is older, um, maybe a nun. I don't know why, but trope-wise, a nun is always given such a long face 
They've kind of, like, it kind of looks like a nun for me. I don't know why. Because they kind of try to remove the sexuality of the nun. So they, they give it a more, they give her a more um, non-gender face, which is a long face, but feminine. Long is a very masculine feature. Um, so she has these extremely long features that were so long compared to her as your reference. So a long face, trust me when I tell you, you didn't want that. Um, it was accidental. It just happened on its own. I don't know what the heck this jumping brush is doing on CC. I, I, I don't know anymore. I don't know what you're doing in Photoshop. Um, so, uh, so the long face is accidental. It is just a sign of low mileage. It is not something that I would accredit to the student as a stylistic choice they made on their own. It is a very intentional, unintentional. Uh, if you know the role of what a long face does in a character design, you wouldn't have used it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a little bit less to do with your stylistic or beauty standards and more to do with bad habits or unintentional um, stuff. So the small mouth is okay, but I wouldn't want you to, to raise the mouth so high the chin looks huge even if we shrink the head. All right, so I'm going to show you where the head was before and you'll be able to tell on your own whether or not it was a little too. I mean, even if the neck was even if the neck was too thick for her face, that would have been better uh, a mistake to have than I'm just going to get rid of this line here. As you can see the line kind of disappears, but the the jaw the neck is still a little bit darker. Um, the neck is still thick though, but I would I would choose a neck problem over a long face problem if I was a student and I were to go back and choose a number of issues to have that I'd have to correct. I would always choose a thick neck problem over a long face thing because long face syndrome, that, that, that long face sketching face that we always get no matter how we draw, where we draw, um, the, the, the default face that we draw when we're out using references, that's really hard to get rid of. Uh, so I would always choose any other mistake over a long face one because it, it, it is a very, very difficult one to shake off. So I'm just going to show you how long the face was before. Do you see what I mean by, by maternal character? It's just, it's too much. Then there is the head size, which is too big, but it's just big enough for a portrait. The problem is it's not just the head size, it's the shoulders. When you are not planning you end up shrinking the shoulders just so they fit in. And when we increase the size of the shoulders, that's when things make sense again. And her head isn't so huge anymore. It kind of makes sense to her body now. Yeah, um, long face is a, is a very big problem to get rid of because you think it looks okay. And it's very, very sneaky. And even if you flip your canvas, you don't see it because, well, the canvas flipping is only horizontal, it's not vertical. You might be able to catch it if you flip your canvas horizontal, uh, vertically, um, so you're seeing the face upside down, Olga, but that not, might not be enough. That might actually um, it still hide it from you. So that's why it's such a bad syndrome because it's, it's, it's just a horrible thing to have to deal with. I'm going to apply that purple of the light environment just over everything as a color. I'm so sorry. I don't know why Photoshop is doing this. And uh, I'm just going to darken the room just a bit more with, with the value of the, uh, yeah, of the color of the background, this purple that you had. You also have like a little bit of a, um, oopsie, oopsie. Oh, shoes. <laughs> okay, I can do this. All right, so we put you, oh, God damn it. Okay, we put you there. And then we, how do I shrink you? I'll deal with you later, you son of a, um, how do I, uh, give up? Okay, so, um, I'm just gonna try to find the last of the wand. Where is the wand? Uh, I, I, I did, I did a wand. Magic, magic wand, magic wand. Um, and I'm just gonna try to, I need to add magic wand to my tool. 
to my tools. Um, I'm just going to try to darken the, um, the upper parts, right, like right around here. See that? It just didn't make any sense that there was any light there, that it, 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 the, the, what was causing it. And then I'm just going to sneak in a slight little shadow off of her into the background. You'll see it really adds a nice little touch. Damn it. <clears throat> An artist with long face syndrome walks into a bar and the bartender says, <laughs> why a long face? <laughs> um, try the hue layer. So there's a hue layer now? Wait, there always was, but I never did that. Okay, anyway. Um, so I've added all of that and we'll just take a look at the before and after. There's another, another big problem with this and it has to do with the canvas size. Can anyone guess it? What's something I tell you guys to never do? The long face is also in the nose, so I haven't corrected that. Oopsie. Always zoom out, you guys. Why does it why doesn't it paste in place? I said paste in place. Okay, so there's this, and then there's where it paste. Why does it paste a couple pixels off? But I, I put it on paste in place. Oh my god, I fucking hate Photoshop. I'm sorry, give me a minute. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Image, I mean edit. Paste in place, control V. Paste into, paste outside. Paste should also be control V. Okay. Um, all right, it just decided to do what it does. So I'm going to just raise the nose so it shrinks just a little bit. Do you see that long face also happens with the nose? So look out for that. That's where it, the sh face shape. You can't pull off long face syndrome thingy without with the lips and the eyes. You don't do it with the lips and the eyes. You do it with the nose length and the face length. Write that back to me, please. So face length and nose length cause can be lengthened um, uh, too much when you have long face. Before, after. And I would, I would darken it even more. I would actually get burn on mid-tones and I would try to darken the outside even more. It kind of adds to that mystery, the magic. The darker you go, the more powerful the secondary light becomes. And if you think her crown isn't lit up enough, good. Because it's not supposed to be. It wouldn't be. If there were little shines and little, you know, little gleams here and there, um, they would be very, very tiny. And they would kind of follow off from a bounce light somewhere trapped in the room, some sort of ambient light. It would be very, very small. Something like that. It would be very, very small. And it would probably travel in lines. It would be very, very tiny little light. Face length and nose length can be susceptible to long face syndrome. <laughs> Thank you, Antares. I don't know how to generate a sentence anymore. Um, but I'm just gonna. So out of ten, how much did you guys miss me? Out of ten. Come on, guys, read me out of ten. So before, after. Do you see how you don't really need much um, to do all of that? And that same light that's illuminating her crown, that same distant light, is also illum illumina illuminating her hair a little bit. <laughs> And um, you gotta make sure to desaturate anytime you apply a belt of highlight to hair. Nose and face length cause long face syndrome. Yeah, so it's not so much the eyes and the mouth, they don't really do much. Um, it's, it's to do with the, with the nose and the face length. I'm just gonna shift things over. I feel like everything in general shouldn't be so cool, uh, warm. These are skin tones that we would see in the daytime. So I'm still going to shift things over into more of a purple range, but imagine it with the old hair. 
So I still want her hair to read as red, um, but I don't want it to read as purple, but at the same time, I don't want the skin to read too warm. So I'd move the skin over here somewhere. Okay. Um, I would also get the color of the, 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 the highlight anywhere, something a little bit off white, and I would apply that to anything that is illuminated. All this said, this is all lighting environment. Um, this is all to do with the room and it has something to do with the anatomy problems that you have, which are a lot. Um, apart from the long face, you do know how to draw an eye, which is really good. Good job on that. You worked hard on the eyes. Now it's time to move over and get, get you know, tighten your belt a little bit and work hard and fix the way you draw noses because this is very symbolic. You've literally outlined the nostrils. Um, even though it's bottom light, you've, you've outlined the nostrils, you've outlined them here and here, you've outlined the septum, you've, you've outlined the nose, and the mouth is just, it's just clip-on. It's a clip-on mouth. Have you ever seen a clip-on mouth? Have you ever seen a Mr. Potato Head? You guys are literally clipping on your, your, your expressions, I mean, your, um, your features on. All right, stop doing that. I'm just going to cast the shadow of the eyeball right over here. And there's a really, really nice effect when you go on darken and you kind of just do that. Do you see how it looks like it's the cast shadow of the eyeball? Isn't that, isn't that sexy? Um, yeah. <laughs> I never left your souls. <laughs> wow, some people miss me one out of ten. <laughs> Jacob misses me the most. No, Kira misses me the most. Isa only misses me 8.5. Abu like a 4. <laughs> Why did you miss me only 1? Wow, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, the eyes are very, very beautiful. Very snake-like. Um, try to find other opportunities to cast shadows as well. You see how I also added a bit of a, a hard edge here? Because that's the fold of the eyeball against the... Um, the, uh, the, 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 the cheek. And then I have, I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to use my, uh, let me get the exact number for you. I'm going to use my number five smudging brush. I'm going to put it on my secret opacity layer, uh, a secret opacity level, which is, can anyone guess it? 1%. Um, and I'm going to smudge. I'm going to try to zoom out as much as possible, but I, I do need to be zoomed in a little. And my oh shit uh smudge tool yep okay so i'm gonna zoom out Ugh, this is really low res and i'm just going to soften the cheeks so that this this smudge brush does a really beautiful thing which is just ever so slightly cause a haze and i'm just going to apply it anywhere where there's a flood of light along an edge so you have long face syndrome, you have anatomy issues, you have edge work issues, you have rendering issues, which all can be fixed by doing like, what, 20 form studies for a nose, um, 20 form studies for the lips. I'm gonna get my other smudge brush, which is the number four. This one is my absolute favorite, but I'm just gonna raise it up to like 9%, and I'm going to smudge with the lips a little. The lips should not be outlined like this. Look at, look at her upper lip because of the shadow beneath. They're just like a big mess. But she still looks really pretty. So you guys have very, very weird beauty standards. Uh, this, these lips are outlined because she has some intense lipstick going on. They had to really darken the lipstick so that the lips can still be visible under all that light glare. Lipstick, natural lips don't read well in, in um, kind of that intense light. So it can make uh, the model look very sickly. And the lips are not at all like married into the uh, the face. And just like that. So we're trying to combine them. So before, after. We're actually getting a room that we add to the, you know, add the character in. And I'm just going to recede the face just a little bit more. Okay, just a touch more. You see how showing less does more for the light? We've talked about this a number of times already. 
uh, but showing less is just wonderful. I'm going to add a little bit of glare back on the earrings. Really, really nice touch for anything metallic. And a little bit of extra light on the hair. You need to work on the hair because you're detailing it all the way down and that might cause some issues for you. Um, so, you know what, I am going to go and adjust the head as I, I did, I did, as I did earlier, sorry, uh, because um, it is not uh, making sense right now color-wise. It, it is still a cold room because you made the background purple. These are your choices. So I'm shifting over. See how little sense, oops, see how little sense it made when it was uh, warmer? And I would, I would do it even more. Push it ever slightly more. So before, after. And then I would just desaturate the further we get. Just take a slice off. Um, just a touch off. When, uh, when the levels of um, hue saturation adjustment are not enough, you can always just go as far as you want and take do the rest um, with, a, with an opacity layer. Of the One is the adjusted one and one is the clean one and you're just letting some through. See how much more sense it makes when we have less grain in the formula. Okay. So before after. <clears throat> um, there is a slightly little extra thing that we can add which adds, adds more hydration to the skin which is like a little belt of light right underneath. See that? Just like that and that means that the eyes are more oily and the eyelids are more oily. <clears throat> um, oi. These Romanian people are back. <laughs> I have these Romanian fairies that visit me and uh, they tend to uh, kind of just take over. The nostrils should be a little bit bigger. Okay, so Abu did some uh, adjustments for me. So this is the object light uh, on Portrait Studio with the light as a, as a, um, is this in front Abu or beneath? I can't tell. But this is like a necklace a little bit beneath the neck, or at least at level with the chin. It should be level with the neck and a little bit lower. And this is the one where it's a bit more in front. And that's the cast shadow right here of the nose area. Just like that, extending and emanating outward. So this cast shadow is and it's not always there because in the other reference we have, it's more of right in front of the face. So that cast shadow is minimized because the light is shining directly on the face, whereas this one is a bit more sharp. And always try to have more than one cast shadow, I mean more than one reference to use. Um, always try to do that because uh, you'll have more than one perspective, more than one way um, to, to, to apply the light into your painting. And it's never necessary for you to be 100% accurate, but as accurate as possible. So purple base, yellow light emerging from a necklace, which doesn't make any sense because it's so bright. I do recommend you dimming it and applying a little bit more to it. Um, but the room is open. There's an atmosphere to it. It feels alive. It feels like a, a you know an actual lit room. All right. Any questions for this? I'm going to just leave it here. Any questions at all? <clears throat> um, if any more Romanian visitors, <laughs> no offense to any of my Romanian viewers, but these, 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 this is a gang. Um, moderators, please feel free to, to, to quiet them. Yeah, always use more than one reference. Uh, so let's look at something else. Uh, my voice is very, very weak today. Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know how much longer I can go for. <clears throat> Allergies are unbelievable. <coughs> how, like, how do you forget you have seasonal allergies? Um, okay, so here, if we were to get rid of the entire face and just, I mean body, and just cover it up a little bit, uh, the kind of gesture I would add is kind of like leaning up against, here, let me just use my sketching brush. I hate soft brush when it's small, it's so icky. Um, 
this is a good size. So he feels like he's leaning up against something, kind of like, you know, doing his thing, kind of just leaning. He's got his shoulders, he's got his torso a little bit relaxed, shoulders kind of leaning up against, you know, a, a, a rock or something, thinking about his girl. He's probably holding a flower, um, one that represents her, and he's just chilling. It is not what you drew here. What you drew here, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to hide the face. And this is something you should be doing as well. Again, fragmenting your learning process, that's my, that's, my, that's, what, that's my teaching style. You always break things into pieces, analyze them individually, put them back together, and you see things a lot better. Um, so right here, what I would add is a very, very low head, kind of like hiding behind the shoulder pad thingy, and um, uh, tilted this way, tilted a little bit away, so kind of like... Ah, you know, like tilted towards, kind of like breaking down a door, pushing an enemy before striking them with this. So this is the motion this way, moving in that direction. And then the hair would be like all behind, more to one side actually, because the motion is this way. Hair is an accessory, so it kind of just trails behind. And then I would have a very, very, very like enraged expression, like very, very angry. Um, that's what I would have. So let's find, see the old one. He's just like, oh, someone's taking a picture of me. He's really happy. He's very, very romantic. Okay. So that's why it, these two just did not match. So you have to apply a more energetic expression for the head, lower on the shoulder line. Neck is not even visible. You showed the neck fully like he's standing up, but what happened to the, to the, to the squat? What happened to the lunge? Um, and uh, this is what you should be doing. You should be having a little bit more time paid to your to your gesture first. I have a feeling that, and I'm just gonna soundly accuse you of it. You did the face first, and you just added a a, a body after. I could be wrong, but like 89% of the time, like 98% of the time, I, I this is the tr this is the fact that someone really does paint a face, like it. It was supposed to be a study. They hear Isarak's voice in their mind saying, okay, move on to the next study now, thanks. No, Isarak, I'm going to make this <laughs> to a masterpiece. I'm always suspicious students are doing this. Oh, I'm, I'm right a lot of the time. Uh, if this is not what you did and you found a reference, that was a very, very terribly acted reference. That was terrible acting um, for someone that's supposed to be fighting something. And uh, the expression is supposed to be a lot more representative of the um, physical uh kind of demand uh, on, on the neck uh, and the face from doing an action like this, jumping into midair. I also think that the thigh should be a little bit more upward like that. Um, so it's kind of just like jumping, the leg is a bit more upward, whereas yours is dislocated and kind of facing away from the camera. The knee is here in yours, um, and the knee should actually be out here in the appropriate version. He seems like he's attacking with his crotch, so he's kind of just like spread his legs a little bit. Um, that's kind of what I'm reading. Okay, uh, so I hope that's helpful. Um, let's talk about uh, Senor Goatee. Any questions? <coughs> um, so let me see. Sprax Fantasies? I don't even know what we. I've lost all context for your comments. <clears throat> I think I should probably stop streaming. My voice is really bad that it, it actually hurts. Um, uh, shouldn't the upper lip cast a bit of a shadow on the cupid's bow? Um, I think so too. I think so too. I think there is a bit of a shadow here. This whole area is a shadow. I mean, we're just referencing what we see here, right? So everything is in order. What's the elf girl's number? Five 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 five. <laughs> um, pelvic thrust. <clears throat> okay, so I, I okay, so there's a question. I have long face problems. I noticed it in my day too. I don't know if I should stay on my form studies or should I start my face study, or should I do both? Help, I'm dumb. <laughs> um, I think you should continue. You should do both definitely, uh, and I think you should attempt to eradicate long face from your work as soon as possible. 
Just keep plowing. <laughs> Whisper. Okay, so now we're gonna go. Out. <laughs> that is too creepy. Oh my god. <laughs> I can shut the door. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about not so much about rendering here, but just about tropes. A little bit of everything today. This mustache is a very particular mustache. I've talked about mustaches and beards. This mustache, whenever you do this, you are either talking to a flirt or a conniving trader or salesman. This is not a goatee that you can trust. This is not something you can trust. I'm not talking about uh, v for Vendetta, I'm not talking about Guy Fox. I'm not talking about uh, anything apart from this in our day, in our modern age. This is a great mustache. It is the sexiest mustache to have. If you are in the 1800s, if you are in the actually 1500s, what am I talking about? 1600s, 1700s, maybe. But this kind of mustache is a very particular it was a very, I'm not sure if it was Dutch, I think it is Dutch. It was a very national, it was, it was a question of national pride. If your mustache went upward uh, for, the, for the Dutch empire. I'm not sure if I'm saying any of this right. I'm not sure if it's even Dutch. I believe it is the Dutch colonial um, kind of like pride thing that they were doing. But all mustaches went up like that. Um, so there's that part of the history for this. There's also Simbad and modern day and anyone who has a mustache like this is so cringy because there's no reason why you should be one flipping it up unless you're making a statement fashion statements are different they are a little bit more difficult to mess with but when it comes to tropes there's no reason why you should be doing this little tricky wing unless you want the character to be tricky there is no reason why your mustache for your character should do this unless there is something they're hiding something they're doing some something really sexy <laughs> or something really devious okay this is a very devious little guy he's saying hey i'm up to something um and it's kind of like vibrating <laughs> it's very it's like a little it's like a whisker so um please please for the love of god don't don't use this there's also another reason i can't say it. i have to say a little more pg but please don't use this in your character. It's not for a protagonist. I mean, I don't think Sinbad had that. And the Sinbad in the Seven Seas, he just had the goatee. I don't think he had the twirls at the end. I think he just had a goatee. Here's a good example. Nope, he didn't have the twirls. He just had it move with, the, with his mouth when he's smiling. So he didn't have the extra little twingy, twingy bits. But who had that? Let's see, Jafar. He, he, had, he had a mustache. He had, he had the same beard. Um, he didn't have it, but he did have a little bit of a beard twirl. See that little twirl? It just looks, he's like, it looks, he, it looks like he's devious. Um, so a goatee is just like... I don't know how to spell it. A goatee. It's, it's just, if you're a, if you're a pirate, <laughs> if you're a cutthroat, if you're a debonair and, 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 and you, that's all you care about, um, that's kind of, that's, see, like pirate and all of that, like that's, there's only so many roles we can use a goatee for. A goatee is different when it doesn't have the bits at the top twirling up if it's thicker if it's thinner it's funnier but like just look at all the characters that we're looking at as characters not as actors or people we're talking about tropes this guy's character in marvel this guy is the pirate um uh, and i'm not sure what he had his for uh but um it's different when it's bigger it's more of a beard when it's bigger um we're talking about the little twirly one that is super clean this, you just don't use it on a protagonist. You're, you're insulting your protagonist by saying, hey, don't trust him. He is a snake. He's underwater, and he still manages to keep his beard pointing up. Unless it's genetic, there's really, it's just a bad choice. If I was an art director, I would ask you very specifically why you chose that and make a case for it. And if it's not a good case, I'd, I'd fire you. 
<laughs> okay, so no, no, as an art director, no, it'll still serve the same purpose. However, if this character was a kind of counselor or a vizier or uh, someone who was an advisor, uh, then I would understand why you gave him the conniving little piece. This is fine if you enlarge it, but what the heck? You're giving us a, a, a mermaid. A mermaid. At the end of the day, he's still a girl mermaid. Um, girly mermaid. And and uh, it's, it does not work as a beard. It doesn't. It doesn't. No. If you are Arab as well, you get to have the little... <laughs> um, no, if you're Arab, you only have a mustache. Okay, so I, I, I hope this kind of helped you understand. Remember, you never blame the viewer for their opinion because the viewer is speaking from their honorable role as the viewer. You cannot blame the viewer for reading tropes that they have been educated on since they were since they fought, saw their first Disney movie. No, it's not a world where what I choose is right and everybody's wrong. No, you always service the viewer. You always give them what they need. Um, so when they are telling you, hey, is, is he some sort of tricky guy? Is he a bad guy? Um, that's because of the mustache, okay? He shouldn't have facial hair at all. He's a fish. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then there's this one, which is a little bit more extensive. But this one has to do a lot with color value um, of the wash of the uh, environment. It's the same thing I did earlier. I just can't do it as thoroughly because <clears throat> I've run out of time. But it's essentially the same business. Um, I'm going to just throw some shadows on top. And I'm going to come back to the old layer. And kind of deleted them as a cast shadow. So I'm just going to use my number two oil brush and just start casting that shadow. Just like that. That's just the cast shadow of the rock, I mean of the tree behind them. <clears throat> and that would, this one is actually a bit more hidden. This guy is a bit more out. He needs a bit more shadow around him actually. Maybe not, maybe it would be like up to there somewhere. And then just a little bit of relief for this ear. It's hard to decide where that relief comes from. But there we go. And just a little bit off this side and the cast shadow of the ear, of the little dude. Um, and then there would be what we're doing with the, uh, so there's, darken and then there would be what we're doing with the colors so I would saturate and shift over into a more pure blue and out of that blue I would just choose the opposite so I would grab everything that is under the light and warm it up because you show me a very sharp cast shadow over here why is nothing else casting shadows that sharply and then there is just the fact that things should be a little bit more kind of concise here so and then applying the color. So a lot of these changes are sweeping changes because that's what light does. It sweeps across your canvas. It does not mess around. It is very straightforward on what it wants in life and it will affect things as needed. It sweeps across, so all your adjust adjustments should also sweep across. If they are, you know, kind of like half-assed adjustments, 
and everything is melting together. It does not show a strength to the light source. Okay, so a little bit better of a color balance going on. Um, the reds are also different temperatures. You have a lot of color issues here. And then there's the value issues. So anything that is illuminated just is not bright enough. And that's kind of reading a little bit more like a, a, a night scene. You di it, does, it does read as a night scene first off. Like it does read as a night scene. Um, it also can read as a really, really dark forest scene. So, so dark it can be night that you'd need a torch, but it's not nighttime. It's just that the forest is so thick. So before. Um, but uh, I recommend something that's a little bit more strong. And if it was a night scene, it would have to be a torch nearby that allows us to get a sharp shadow like this, and that means we'd need warm values. So where you were before, you didn't have cast shadows on anything else. Nothing else had cast shadows on it. Um, this is kind of a tangent, I have to fix that. So we need cast shadows on everything with the trees cast shadow, um, extending this way. All right, uh, so any questions at all for this piece? For any of the pieces, really? Uh, we're done over here. Um, I, I, do would I would recommend a little bit of a, a secondary glow or something to illuminate the far side. So we're looking at, I'm just going to grab my sketch brush. Just anything, I always go for the turquoise for ambient. So anything to help illuminate the character. It's, this is not an outlining, this is a full like, I'm not even sure what I'm looking at over here. Just something to uh, illuminate them from the distance, <clears throat> from the darkness, sorry. Okay, um, the thing that is causing this much warm light should also be visible. So if there is a, where are you? If there is a strong light coming in, it should be represented a little. yellow should be a bit more obvious that there is something nearby that's allowing them to be visible uh, but where you were before things were a bit flat and uh, the cast shadow didn't make much sense so I would just choose a solid time of day something recognizable not try to be abstract too much the more abstract you try to be without training the more you look like you're the more, fum more, more fumbles, the less graceful you look. Um, a, a student should never try to be, uh, to try to stylize or break too many rules. It'll just read as, not a style, it'll just read as basic lack of knowledge. Uh, for this girl, I would actually desaturate just a bit. Okay. Uh, would you have any advice for the rendering of my monk piece? Um, I'm not... No, I'm not choosing any more. I'm not adding any more to today's critique hour. Um, I'm not sure where the monk piece is, if it's one of the ones I chose. But um, I, I don't have any. I'm not adding any more classes done. Um, so <laughs> be like light. Know what you want and just sweet. When is subsurface scattering and skin supposed to happen and when does it not happen? Actually, there was something that I was supposed to bring in. Um, wait a minute. Uh, where are my downloads? Uff, 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 uff. I hate you, Mozilla. Um, downloads. Ugh. Where do I... Where do I find them? Um, it's actually here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. It was a subsurface scattering piece that I might look at on Thursday. It was, it was really well done, but there were some major issues. Um, so I'll be looking at that once I find it, and I'll, and I'll put it up on Thursday. If I remember, if you could please remind me. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Please remember that the critique hour for due date for the boss fight is going to be Thursday the 10th. And to join the class, you just have to go to isterac.com and click on the Google Plus icon to join. Please read the rules. I'm really, really happy to be back. I am just rearing to come back, but just, yeah, it's a horrible comeback with the whole allergy thing and my voice just completely falling apart. 
Um, and if you're interested in joining this month's Patreon, you might still have time to register as an apprentice and join us on Discord for our next assignment. And if you want to, you go to isarak.com and click the little Patreon icon as well um, and join there. It's, it's a great alternative for private tutoring without the um, a little bit more of a community involved. Um, and that's it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye.